Hey everyone. Yikes, good morning. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. And it's Tuesday. Yay, first day of June. We're going to be covering a topic that uh, everyone loves, and that is vinyl, um, HTV, or iron-on, as I refer to it. Um, it's iron-on material, and we're actually going to be layering iron-on to make this really cool tote bag um, and uh, the personal personal uh, I need this bag because I need to go back to swimming at the pool and um, the last time I did that was before COVID so I just realized last night I need to swim it's such a wonderful relaxing um, it's a relaxing exercise for me for my brain and I miss it terribly so um, this morning I thought we would we would cover a number of things. I hope you're all well. We're going to cruise on through this quick, rather quickly. But what I'd like to cover is I'd like to talk about layering, of course. I want to show you how to cut this. It's smart iron on um, with this. This is the Explore 3. Then I want to talk about what do you do when you don't have smart iron on. That's a topic that seems to be very popular right now. Um, and we will also actually iron on. Um, so I want to show you the my my very, very favorite thing called the uh, heat press guide. Um, and... Let's see, I'm trying to think what there else there is. Heat press guide, and then we'll actually be doing some iron-on. Okay, so we're going to be making this. Sorry about no notification. I don't control that, and I don't know um, I don't know how to solve that. So I apologize if you didn't get notification. So this is a tote bag that I got. I think I got it at Jiffy, T, Jiffy Shirts. Jiffy Shirts. Um, they were really inexpensive. I'm sure you can probably find them on Amazon in a bulk. And at the time, this was several years ago, I bought a bunch and I had a couple extra left over. Um, if you happen to have some left over, I just want to point out that you can actually take the handles off and make this into a pillow, um, like an outdoor pillow, uh, which I have done or an indoor pillow for that matter, if you don't mind the canvas or whatever. But uh, today it's more a little more practical. I need a tote to take with me to the pool. So um, I thought, well, I can't just bring any old tote. In fact, I don't even know where my totes were, but um, I figured, hey, perfect example or perfect opportunity um, to, uh, to make a tote bag uh, using the new Ex Explore 3. Okay, so um, just to kind of start off, if you're new with me, uh, my name is Rita, and this is my channel, Miss Rita to the Rescue. We have this program, Cricket Chat. We've been doing it for, oh, a year and a half now, I think. Uh, or no, over a year, at least over a year. Um, it's a daily program that's on Facebook Live and then repeated um, on YouTube and other places. Uh, so if you're here on the live, you can participate in the chat. Everybody in the chat is very, very friendly and nice. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, depending on where you're watching it from, you may not be able to see the whole chat. And so sometimes that doesn't, it's not easy to follow along. But I do like to interact with people because these are my friends. A year and two months, right? These are my friends and... Um, and so I do interact with them, and sometimes it might be a little off. You know, you might not be following along, and that's okay. Um, and try to catch the live, and that's what we're talking about, notifications. 
Um, some people are saying that Facebook's playing with the notification settings again. Um, if you're following me on on Facebook, Miss Rita to the Rescue, you will you're supposed to get notifications when I go live, um, and so that's what they're talking about there. Hi, hi, Penny. How are you? So, um, so today we're going to be talking Explore Air Three and this stuff. It's iron on. Now, this iron on comes in so many different colors and um, even uh, styles. This is actually holographic iron on. Um, and it comes in rolls of like three feet and nine feet, very reasonably priced. And these are new products. You won't see them on the shelves until, oh, next, I think it's next week or the ninth or something like that. And that's when these two machines are, are going to be uh, available online. Um, this machine today I'm going to talk about is the Explore 3. If you have an Explore Air 2 or any kind of Explore machine, um, you certainly don't need to upgrade because those machines are still pretty awesome and um, <coughs> excuse me, money people have had them for years and years. However, Cricut did launch two brand new machines and um, with it, all of these smart materials. The main differences between the Explore 3 and also the Maker 3, the main difference between the new machines and the older machines is speed, that's probably the number one thing. Um, number two is smart iron-on. And what that's meant to be is uh, iron-on or material, smart materials are things that we don't use a mat for. Now, I want to kind of cover this because it came up yesterday. Here's the thing. Um, I am sure, as I said yesterday, I'm sure there are people that are going to find a hack, a workaround um, with these iron-on, smart iron-on. There are going to be people that figure out how to use this in the old machines. There are going to be people that figure out how to use this stuff without a mat. Um, and all of that is really fun and great and creative. But for me, as my role and as a product expert for Cricut, I really um, want to focus on the things that are pretty awesome and the way that they're designed. So um, if, you know, if you catch somebody that is uh, doing that, that's all well and good, but um, I, I really just kind of, I look at it as my role is to show you the products as they're designed and as they're designed, it really pretty awesome. So, um, that's just kind of a word about that. <coughs> Sorry, I have something in my throat. Hold on. Okay. So, um, speed. The smart materials, I mentioned it yesterday, but um, also the noise factor. These machines are a lot quieter. I'm going to show you that. Um, and I don't know if it messes with the warranty or not. I, I really honestly don't have an answer to that. But um, whatever, you know, people are going to do what they do. <laughs> so, um, so sound, we talked about sound and I forgot the fourth thing but there are four things that I really like about these new machines and that speed sound um or the reduction of sound um and the smart materials uh, I forget what the fourth one is hmm oh yes weeding <laughs> the weeding is much better um now this project could be in Shirley's bringing it up about iron on with the joy um, this project could be done on the joy. And in fact, uh, I could have cut out these individual letters on the joy and that would have worked out because they are smaller than four and a quarter inches. Um, one, one is 
mm, one uh, piece is shorter than four and a quarter inches. But the backing, which is blue, uh, white, um, is bigger than that. In fact, um, I wanna cut it even bigger so that it would take up more space on here. Um, and you could not do that with the Joy, but, um, but there's, you know, that you could make it smaller and and work with the joy as well. So not to, excluding joy people, okay? So let's first start off with where did I get this image? Because a lot of people don't understand how to use design space all that well. I wanna show them um, where I found this image and what I did to make a change to it. I'm working on my laptop, but remember you can work on uh, any device that you want. There's laptop, iPad, um, your mobile phone, and then of course, you know, a desktop. So whatever works for you, this is just, I try to show all the different kinds of ways so that you guys can see it. So I'm gonna start off with a new uh, canvas. And by the way, I will give you this, uh, that file that we just looked at. Um, and it will be in the description of the video after the video is put on replay, okay? So um, we're gonna go to images. And here we're just going to search and use the word swim. I also did some searches using the word pool and swimming and summer because I wanted to find like the perfect um, image that, um, I wanna find the perfect image. And uh, so here is what I found. I love it because it's layered and it's got the, you know, the, the waves and everything. Now, once you find the image, if you really, really like it and you wanna see others like it, you can click on this eye right here where it says uh, an eye with a circle and you can see that it says view image sets. When you click on that green link, it will bring you to the collection of images called an image set. And this one is by Miss Kate Cuttables, a uh, splish plash. Now, normally, um, Miss Kate Cub Cuttables have, she's very color rich, lots and lots of, um, colors and layering those can be a little bit daunting. So, um, but this one, not so much. So that's kind of why I like it. But if I were going to try something, I like the sun one too. And I like this pool one too. Um, but when, when we're looking at them, you may need to sort of, uh, sort of consolidate the colors and I'll show you what I mean here. So, so this is our image and you'll see here, I'm going to ungroup it. So in addition to these letters and the waves, here we go. There are actually three layers here. Now I don't, I don't think three layers is really for, for, HTV or for iron on. I, don't know, I think it's a little much, maybe two, but I'm showing you this in one. Um, and so when you get and find this image, you'll see it, it only has this one background. So I'm going to actually um, remove these just to kind of make it look cleaner, I guess. And then you'll see um, that we've got the M and the W, the S, and the I. Now the I, which has a dot over it, you see that? Um, is two pieces, which is kind of weird. So what I would suggest you do there is, um, is group that together, but you're gonna have to, um, remove the back before you do that and you can weld it actually. Once you weld it, it will cut um, the same way that it, it is. And then we've got these like these cute little waves, which I actually made um, onto the front. First, I started playing with uh, 
uh, with holographic vinyl because it's what I had for smart vinyl. But then I decided to switch it and actually layered it right on over it. I don't know if you can kind of see, but you can see the, like the, the holographic on the bottom. Here's the thing. Glitter iron-on, if you're going to do any glitter iron-on, it kind of has to be on the top. Layering a uh, with it on the bottom is not a great idea. Any kind of specialty vinyl, not the not the greatest idea. So um, try to stick with glitter as an accent, like on the top, and um, and you should be fine. Now there, if you well, no, I'm not even going to go there. I was going to talk about infusible ink and glitter, but we can talk about that another day. Um, okay, so. Here we go. All we have to do is size it appropriately and then cut it. Um, now this this is actually, I, I measured it. It's about 12 inches um, by 13 inches, okay? And uh, so I think what I liked about this was I wanted to, I didn't want to put it straight. I kind of wanted to put it sort of on the side and um, because it, it is kind of, it looks that way. So all we have to do is make sure it's going to fit onto our, um, onto our design. I'm going to just group it and kind of just sort of manipulate. So the widest part of this design is 11 point, uh, two, nine, six. I mean, I could make it bigger. It wouldn't fit actually. I'm not going to make it bigger. Why am I talking like that? But that's the beauty of smart vinyl. You can, uh, make it really, really big. So if you had a really, really big bag that you wanted to do, you can change the, the parameters there. So all I have to do at this point is I have to, um, send this to the machine to cut. Now this is the, uh, Explore Air Three. I'm sorry, not the Air. The Explore Three, and we are going to be using Smart Material. So when you're working, I want to cancel out of this, but um, let me just cancel out of this. I want to point this out because I realized I did not paint point this out yesterday. So when you're working with uh, the new machines, what you will need to do is you will need to choose the machine that you want to use. And right now, when you're looking at your um, at your own design space, you will see that it's probably just has the Joy the Maker and the Explore family. But when this launches, you will also have the choice of the Maker 3 and the Explore 3. So this gives me the opportunity to uh, craft using the, the machine that I want to craft. And um, this is so that the machines can, you know, like my laptop can talk to this and I need to um, switch. If I need to switch it up, I can switch it up here. Like if I want to cut it on my maker, which is behind here, I want to cut it on the maker three. I just need to choose the right machine. I, I wasn't that obvious about it yesterday. So I wanted to make sure that I told you that. So explore three and I'm going to hit make it. And um, this is something that if, unless you have the joy, you ha probably haven't seen before, but you're going to be asked, um, how you're going to be cutting this. Are you going to be cutting it using smart materials, which actually we are, except for the glitter. Um, so, so no to the first one. We're not going to be cutting all of them on the mat, so no to the second one. And so we're going to do multiple ways where it says I have to manually select for each mat, okay, or each load, they call it now. All right, so this is what it will look like until I change the material or the mat, okay? So for example, let's pull up this. This is the, um, the waves, right? So once I'm going to, I'm going to cut that out in glitter. So I'm going to come over here where it says material load type, and I'm going to choose on mat. And you'll notice that the screen appears differently. It shows me a mat and how it will be placed on the mat. These 
are not the same, okay? These are going to be cut without the mat, and um, so it doesn't show the mat, right? It looked pretty pretty straightforward. Um, one of the things about iron-on that you have to have to remember, and you might get caught up in all these other details, so I'm pointing it out to you, is you must always mirror your, especially with words, but you always should get in the habit of mirroring your iron-on. And that's because of the way that it goes on, the way that it's cut. And I will show you that when we get to that place, okay? So it, even on this one which is on the mat I have to go in and mirror each of these pieces okay and here we are so they they all look a little bit different and then we're going to hit continue now because we have both on mat and no mat um, we're going to see different base materials pop up depending on the mat that we choose. So here I'm going to choose the the one we're going to use the glitter iron on and you notice that I get all my favorites back. But if I choose the first one which is uh, off the mat, I have very little of my favorite. So I'm going to go to browse all materials and I'm going to choose smart iron on, okay? So that's what I'm doing, and here it is. It, it does tell me I need to um, mirror. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here that's different about uh, the current design space is that uh, you should have to uh, select remember material settings. This is something new that they installed for the Joy. Um, <laughs> Um, sorry. So this is something new that they installed for the Joy. And it, if you don't click on this, you will have to do it every single time. So I'm going to click on that even though when I get to my mat, um, on the mat one, I, I am going to, um, have to change it. Okay. So I'm doing smart iron on. So the first one that I'm going to do, of course, I don't have, which is the white. Oh no, here it is. Here's the white. Okay, so um, these come in the box. This is what it looks like. It's 13 inches. This one is a three foot. And you can see here, it's smart iron on heat transfer vinyl. Um, and we'll just take it out of the box. What can't you see? Is there a problem? Are you having a hard time? seeing this. Okay. Um, I am of course running out of space, but, um, let me back up here so you can kind of see the, the machine. So here is vinyl. It's very much like the kind of vinyl that you get in the roll. Um, only longer. There are two sides to it. This is the, the shiny side. This is the matte side. The matte size is what you're going to put facing up, okay? Because this is what we're going to cut. And that's why we have done the mirroring, okay? So we're going to cut that first uh, white and we are going to slowly or whatever, you know, carefully put it underneath these matte guides, or these guides, I should say. And you'll see that there is a blinking light. I'm going to hit the blinking light and um, the machine then takes my material in. Now, one of the things that I've noticed and that was kind of cool is the machine actually, if you put it in wrong, like, you know, sometimes you put in the mat wrong and it like jams or it doesn't work right and the mat gets all wrinkly and stuff. That doesn't happen with smart materials. The machine actually understands and sort of self-corrects there. So um, that's pretty, pretty awesome. So we're going to just hit this button and it will start cutting out all of the pieces one at a time, obviously. Now, there's something to be said for... Um, 
for some of these smaller pieces uh, and using the smart vinyl. So here is the biggest piece of all, which it's hard to see the cut, but I can feel for it here. And let me get my scissors. Here is where I'm going to cut it. Okay. And then I'm just going to put this back into the box. I think that's an easy way to keep track of it. And then we'll move right along. Now, the second color is orange, but I didn't have orange. So I'm going to use green for that. And I'm going to put that in here. Again, shiny side, so this is the matte side. This is the side that's gonna go in here, okay? And we have to hit that button to pull it in. That's different from the Joy. The Joy um, actually just takes it right in without having to make, like press the button. But this is, this is something that they decided to keep um, in this whole process, so we hit go again and what's up next yellow so i'm going to get my yellow ready and that's it <laughs> it's so quick um and one of the things that i want to point out here is that so here's my here's my s which i you know it's kind of small you know so what do you do about this so what i would suggest that you do is that you try to cut cleanly across here so that it is rather straight. Mine's not super straight, but it is rather straight. Now this part that um, is not part of my uh, cutout, I'm going to keep, but I won't be able to put this back in the machine like this because it's smaller. So I am going to save it for when I do something with scraps and it can go on a mat, just like something that is not a smart material, okay? So let's do our yellow. Sorry, I know I do everything. <laughs> I do everything as we go because I want you to see how long this could take you um as to do a project okay so there we go and let's get the yellow out put the yellow um there is a trimmer as somebody is pointing out that comes uh as an optional accessory it's part it's part of the roller um, the, the roller, or you can use the personal trimmer or the, I think that's what they call it, which they've now introduced as 13 inches. So here is the 13 inch one. You can see here, 13 inches. And if you want to, um, sort of cut to size anything, you can do that with these pers the personal trimmer a little hard to do uh, without this and I'm trying not to drop it off the side okay so is my did I did I do that I think I did it wow oh did I see I don't even know what I'm doing anymore <laughs> all right so here's my eye is done so quick you wouldn't even know what you're doing. And I'm just going to trim this off. And again, you know, you guys get the idea that you have to put it in so that it's evenly um, cut. And I will go back and, and trim that up. So now we're at the mat that we're going to do on glitter. Okay, so glitter iron-on. I wanted to show you glitter iron-on that was smart iron-on because remember last week we did a glitter iron-on and it was such a mess because we had to use um, masking tape to hold it down and because it was in the roll and it was really tightly wound. So, um, so I 
I didn't get a chance to do that because I, I didn't have this color. So here's the color. It's a really pretty blue glitter. You see that? And I am going to put it on a mat, which I have here behind me. Okay, here's my mat. Mat. And these are my extras pieces, which again, could go on the mat. And we are going to take and put the glitter vinyl with the shiny side facing down onto this mat. Now we don't need to have the whole sheet, but um, I have a tendency to use the whole sheet and then just cut from the whole sheet. And I'm going to put this mat right into shiny, um, shiny side down. I'm going to put the mat into the machine. It won't let me go. Why? Because it's not, um, it's not flashing because I haven't chosen the material. So in this case, I'm choosing glitter iron on and then all of a sudden you see that flash and we can just go ahead and um and cut this now one of the things you'll notice is that cutting with with the mat is actually slower um not by much but it is slower um than using smart materials so we'll have an opportunity to see it it's not like it's going to happen in a flash okay so you notice that it's a little bit slower, which is fine. It's not terribly slow or anything. It's not slower than our other machines. And we can take that out. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to pretend like we cut all of these because um, we don't need to cut those other two. And I want to show you how this goes together. So I'm going to um, cancel out of this. And again, remember, I'll get you that um, file, okay? I need to move my laptop because I need to make room for my Easy Press. So we're gonna be using my Easy Press 2. I used to use, I use the mini, and you could use the mini for this. A lot of minis, the, and the mini works for a lot of things. So um, this is actually, uh, the X, the Easy Press 2, and um, it comes in its own cradle. If you don't have one, you can use uh, the mini, or you can use, uh, if you ha some people have the earlier edition, so it's just the plain Easy Press, or you can use an iron um, for most materials. You cannot use an iron for... Um, for uh, for uh, uh, infusible ink, you need that heat that this goes up to. So um, just kind of a quick lesson about this. It turns on here, and you have to wait for that C to turn green. Here is the temperature setting guide. Here is the time setting guide. And here's how you do plus or minus. It remembers the last setting that you had it on. So when I turned it on, um, if I wanted to change the uh, setting, I would hit the temperature and go up or down, whichever we want to do. So how do I know what, um, what to set it at or what time to set it at? Easy peasy. There's something uh, on the Cricut site. It's called the Cricut Heat Guide. I would, um, this is what it is. I would bookmark this or have it so that it's easily accessible. And there, you can print this, but honestly, it changes um, pretty often. So it's best to just kind of use this guide. So it's an interactive guide and you choose which, uh, which press you're going to use. Now, if you have an iron, I would choose um, the Easy Press Mini. If you have like a household iron, I would choose the Easy Press Mini um, as a comparable thing uh, because you have to move that around and the heat is not consistent as on the Easy Press. But today I have the Easy Press 2, and what I'm going to choose is the material that I cut. Now remember, I cut most of these pieces 
using regular everyday iron-on it's called smart iron-on is everyday iron-on there is no distinction uh, there so I'm going to choose everyday iron-on and then my base material is actually cotton canvas which is that's what we're using for the bag. The last thing you have to choose is, is what you're going to press it on. You have a choice of a towel or an easy press mat. I have easy press mat. I would highly recommend that you have the easy press mat. It saves your surfaces and it's perfect for this. And then you're going to hit apply and you will see that um, the this, this is, you know, this is sort of the summary and then gives you all of the details. So here you'll see we have to preheat for five seconds. And one of the things that uh, a lot of people skip is the preheat, which they probably shouldn't because it actually takes out the moisture from your substrate or from your material. And if your uh, item, like your tote bag, has been hanging around for a while, it's probably, you know, you don't know. There's moisture in the air, depending on where you live and everything. So do definitely do the preheat preheat it will make a difference and then it gives you uh the temperature 340 and it says 30 seconds so we need to to um to heat this up to 340 so i'm going to hit this and choose to put it at 340 and it will blink a couple of times and then you see the little uh the circle turns orange because it's not yet at 340. So while we wait for that to heat up, I'm going to try to make some room around here. Whoops. All right, let's move this stuff over here. All right. Okay. And... I'm gonna get my mat out. Now we're gonna be layering. It's not a huge layer. It's not like a really, really complicated layer, but there is some layering aspects to it. So I'm gonna show you how that works, okay? So now it's at 340. And here is our design all cut out, except I didn't weed the glitter. I figured I'd show you how to weed the glitter. And as long as I can find my weeding tool, here it is. Okay. So weeding glitter in, or weeding any iron-on is pretty simple. And actually, I kind of like doing it over, um, over weeding vinyl because it has this backing here. And you're going to just pull away this seed. This is why we do it upside um, mirrored, is that this it's cut on this side, and then we pull away all of this. Now, if you're working with glitter and you're concerned about all these little pieces of glitter here, don't be. That does not transfer on to your design. But here is how easy was that, right? To to um, weed that. If there were little pieces, you just need to make sure you pull it off, and that is. Um, the last piece that's going to go on, but just to kind of show you the design. So we have, this is the white that's going to be, um, that's going to be on the bottom. And then once we press that, we then are going to, you know, in various stages, we're going to press these pieces onto the, um, onto the, design okay so first we're going this is my the one i already did so let me get the other one so first we're going to as suggested we are going to preheat this i will tell you that the um the handles are a bit daunting so so be careful on that okay so um so it's at 340 and i'm just going to preheat it this will actually take out any wrinkles too and just preheat it for that five seconds remember that is so that it prepares the whatever the material to accept the iron on okay so here we go and it takes out some moisture and stuff. So the first layer that we're going to do is, as I mentioned, is this backing layer. And I decided, right, I was going to put it sort of 
this way. Now, one thing, if you have a dog in the house or dogs like I do, one thing that I would suggest that you do, and um, it works really, really well, especially if you're doing iron-on, is to, if you cut this ahead of time, which I did, you can see their hair here and that's because this part is a little bit tacky so you can actually take a lint roller and roll over that now you might say well nobody's going to notice that you will <laughs> you will notice and you'll get hairs um, especially if you have corgis uh, you'll get hairs sort of trapped there and you can see that that's gone off and I would do that with each piece if you cut this ahead of time or if it's had time to sort of settle it's something you want to consider doing okay so here is the first piece we're going to do this on here now this is set for 30 seconds but we're only going to do half of that that's because we're going to be doing a lot of layering and if I wanted to I could change the timer here if this is not a hard and fast rule so I might you know kind of say oh it's a few seconds over it's not a big deal this is sort of a big piece and I want to make sure I get all sides of it then you do have to cool it, take it away from this pad because the pad retains the heat, okay? And you gotta cool it a little bit because first of all, you burn your hands, it's hot. But then we need to um, be able to peel it and it is a warm peel, but you don't wanna burn your hands either, okay? So you can see it's sort of coming off here and I do do this rather slowly. I probably should have cooled it even more, but you know, you guys will do it better than me um, and you won't be rushing, you know, to show everybody. Okay, so there is our first. Now I will point out here on, let me move. Um, I will point out here on the side, it's not, like it's not as really adhered as I would like it to be, but that is um, not such a big deal because you're gonna be keeping going over this, okay? Now we've got four letters and they overlap in different ways. I started doing the W and then the M. I did them together because they're not touching. And this will save you a, a couple of trips with the with the machine. So let's do the W and the M. And then once we remove them, we are going to put the S and the I. Now, the reason why we cannot do this um, all together is A, the, the S overlaps with the W, but also this transfer material gets sort of in the way like over here gets in the way. So it's just good habit. I mean, I suppose you could kind of fiddle something around by cutting this out and all of that, but it's just kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. So we're going to put this on for the 15 seconds. Now, um, some people might be wondering about the areas that were not covered with the transfer sheet. If you feel uncomfortable about it, you can use like a butcher paper, but I found that you can actually, um, you can actually get away with not covering it. Do you see what I mean for this part? And that's why I was talking about the edges. You don't have to really worry about too much um, if they're not 100% adhered on there. Okay, so here's the M and the W is coming off nicely. I'm just trying to cool it off a little. Here we go. It's coming along. Isn't that great? And then we're going to put our S and the S does overlap the W a little bit. That's why we put it on separately. And then the I, there's actually like a little bubble here so that shows you how this gets on there because it, it's already got an offset. And it is a little higher 
So do keep that in mind, okay? There's my handles getting in the way. Okay. And again, with the 15 seconds, suppose I should have set this to 15 seconds. Um, now, the last piece is glitter. So we need to um, look at the look at the time i'm sorry the heat press guide to uh to make sure that we have the right temperature so we're going back to here and we're going to change the heat transfer um kind to glitter and then we'll we'll need to ch choose a different uh the base material again and I'm gonna choose my easy press mat and we hit apply and you will notice it says 270. So we're up a little too high. So I'm going to, whoa, okay. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to hit the temperature guide and I'm gonna go down to 270 and it will flash a little bit and then it will the the light will turn orange and you have to wait until it actually goes from the higher um degrees to lower which i think is pretty awesome uh, i wish i had like my stove do this instead no um i have to actually turn my stove on it's a pain in the neck but um uh this is really rather um smart okay so we do have to wait for that and what we'll do is we'll put, we can take these off in the meantime. Let me move you back. Oh my goodness, we're moving all over the place. All right, and I'm going to take off my S. I did not heat roll, I'm, I did not lint roll my letters, and I, so I'm hoping that no, um, no hairs got stuck, but there was a hair that got stuck right here. And so if that happens to you, uh, what I've done is don't try to remove it from underneath, but just snip the ends. And uh, if you try to move it from underneath, it might ruin the iron on, okay? So while we're waiting, it's it's getting down there. We can take and talk about these two things. So originally, I cut this out in heat uh, holographic, and um, I thought, "Ooh, that would look really cool." And uh, so mm, it didn't look so cool. It was kind of transparent. This is the holographic blue. So I then first I put it on there and then so then I covered it over with the glitter. But then while I was playing, I thought, hey, since I already have this cut out, what if we put this on top of the glitter? So we're going to try that, okay, and see what happens. Maybe we'll have like a holographic glitter I don't know so <laughs> so one of my totes might be messed up but I'm going to try it for the sake of just trying it okay now the um the the wave things I I was placing like here so it kind of covers part of the W but it's still readable and then part of the I and remember remember it doesn't matter that this glitter is here don't get your you know all uptight about that it does not transfer to your base material but while I'm sitting here thinking about it I am going to use my lint thing just in case one of those corgi hairs landed on these pieces and they, it actually just flies in the air around here so it's so much hair so much hair all right and uh so here we go we're gonna put we're gonna try the glitter and i'm still waiting for my heat press to get down to the 270 so i think while i while i am waiting for that i would just stop and say hello to everybody <laughs> hi guys and uh let's see it's tuesday we've got a great week coming up friday uh, is 3d friday and then we also have our um date night we have date night on saturday night at seven um and uh let's see tomorrow tomorrow i think that we will probably do a mug 
on the joy because I haven't done that in a while. So if I can get everything cooperating, we'll do a mug on the joy tomorrow being Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe do some cards or something. I have a list, but of course I can never remember it when it's time for the video. So <laughs> so you guys are going to have to just put up with me with that. Um, oh, I remember. For Friday, we're going to be doing... Laurie Whitlock had another sale, and we're going to be doing um, those 3D shadow box cards. They're really, really nice. Uh, so here we go. And we have to do a long sign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have this really, really large long sign that I bought a number of years ago. It's been hanging around my craft studio. I found it over the, um, over the weekend when I was cleaning. It's very long and very big. And I'm going to paint it with acrylics and then I'm going to cut on the Explore Air 3 one of those long signs and adhere it to the board, okay? Um, so there you go. Still waiting. It's almost at two. Oh, it's taking a little while. I apologize for that. Let's see. What else? What else is there to know? Well, um, let's see. Did everybody see Anna? Come on, uh, Anna Griffin on HSN. If you guys get HSN, um, I saw a little preview video that she did. She has some really unbelievable dyes. And I was going to ask the Cricut folks if um, she was going to make Cricut. But they're kind of like embossed dyes. Uh, I don't know. She hasn't added anything new lately, although she does talk about Cricut products. So I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to ask. And uh, let's see. What else is there to know? There is a sale. I think today's the last day at Cricut.com. Um, if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do that. Um, please, please, please subscribe. And let's see. Uh, it's a new month, so I will go over my patrons on Patreon and also on Facebook, my my fans and I will say hi to all of my patrons and page and uh, fans probably on Saturday night and do I have any viewer mail I I have one thing for viewer mail that I haven't actually opened from Tina ride out in Maine so um there we go you know what I'm getting impatient of waiting so it's getting down there so I'm just going to uh, put this here. Now, you guys don't need to be impatient like me. Um, you can you can wait and wait the time, but we're on the clock, so I'm going to just do this. <laughs> so it's 15 seconds because we're going to do the last one is the holographic and... Um, so we're going to put that over the glitter. So wait until it's 270, okay? <laughs> um, because that's the correct temperature. It, it was almost there. And I've got to cool it off. And then I can peel it off. And now it's ready, right? So see that glitter did not come off on that transfer. And that's what it looks like with the glitter. Okay. Um, and let's try the holographic on there for the last thing. Just because, I don't know, because it's fun to try new things. Uh, you don't have to do it, especially if it comes out badly. So we're going to do this. Now this one here. <clears throat> being the last press we're going to do for the whole 30 seconds. <clears throat> we can also turn it around and do the back, but to be honest, um, I don't think with all this pressing that we've been doing that that's necessary. I can just show you how to do it just in case you want to be very, very specific about it. And I'm just moving it so that I'm getting these edges. This is the nine by nine. I do have the larger one, but it's kind of difficult to, to, um, 
Oh, interesting. So here is the holographic. Now it is hot, but look, it didn't, it didn't go on there. So now we know holographic will not adhere to glitter. Interesting. Okay. So, um, the first one that I did, I did the holographic first. You see that? And, um, and I didn't line it up all together completely. And I put the, the glitter. So if you want to do it that way, but you can't do it the opposite way. Okay. And then just flip it over to the back and give it a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a time so that it's fully adhered onto my bag. This is uh, going to be washable. The everyday iron-on stays and stays and stays through, I think they tested it, like 50 or 70 washes. I certainly won't be washing it that many times because I, <laughs> I don't wash my tote bags that often. It's probably a bad thing. But um, so there we go. Here is our completely layered and done using all of this is smart except for the glitter that we did on the mat. So do you like it? Will you try this layering whether or not you have the Explore Air 3 um, or not? Uh, I'm wondering if you'll try it. So I thought it was kind of cute and it's going to motivate me to get back to swimming, which I really need to do. So um, that is it for today. I think it looks really wonderful. <laughs> um, all right, everyone, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. And um, again, if you missed anything, you can catch the replay on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. And we will be having our June prizes since it is June 1st. We'll be having our June prizes coming up um, soon. And you guys uh, have an opportunity to win a brand new Joy. We have a bundle of Joy again for another month. We're offering a giveaway for a Joy machine. Um, and that is going to be up, I'm going to say Friday. It'll probably be up Friday. And we'll give it uh, two weeks so that you can get your name in for that. Okay? So, everyone, thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely day. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.